You will begin taking insulin by injecting it with a needle into the subcutaneous tissue. To determine when you should inject insulin, pay attention to the times you check your blood sugar, when you eat, and what kind of insulin you are taking. Check your blood sugar no more than 30 minutes before you eat. If you are taking rapid-acting insulin before meals, give yourself the insulin when you sit down to eat. If you are taking regular insulin before meals, give yourself the insulin no more than 30 minutes before the meal. If you are taking intermediate acting or long acting insulin, give yourself the insulin at the same time each day. There is no standard or typical dose of insulin. Your dose will be the amount of insulin that you need in order to keep your blood sugar in good control. Your doctor will prescribe an insulin dose that is right for you. The most common side effect of insulin is low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. Low blood sugar happens when the level of sugar in the blood falls below 70 mg per deciliter. Symptoms include sleepiness, shaking, sweating, dizziness, and hunger. Be sure you know how to treat low blood sugar before you start using insulin. An insulin injection delivers medicine into the subcutaneous tissue, which is the tissue between your skin and muscle. Subcutaneous tissue, which is also called sub-Q tissue, is found all over your body. Your healthcare provider has chosen insulin injections that are done with a syringe that is filled from a bottle of insulin as the best option for you. Here are the steps you will take. Select a clean, dry work area. The supplies you will need include the prescribed bottle of insulin, an insulin syringe, alcohol wipes, and a container for used equipment. You can use a hard plastic container with a screw-on or tight lid, or a commercial sharps container. Begin by washing your hands. If the bottle of insulin appears cloudy, roll the bottle in your hands and turn it from side to side for one full minute. You do not have to roll the bottle if the insulin is completely clear. Do not shake the bottle. If opening a new bottle of insulin, remove the plastic cap and wipe the top of the bottle with an alcohol wipe. If using a bottle of insulin that has already been opened, you will still need to wipe the top or rubber stopper with an alcohol wipe. Remove the caps from both the top and bottom of the insulin syringe. You may need to twist the cap to get it to come off more easily. Do not touch the needle. Pull back on the plunger to the unit mark for the insulin dose that has been ordered for you. Put the bottle on the table. Insert the needle straight into the top of the bottle through the rubber stopper. Push the plunger down to inject the air into the bottle. Turn the bottle upside down with the needle still in it. Hold the bottle at eye level. Make sure the tip of the needle is in the insulin. Make sure not to bend the needle when picking up the bottle. Pull the plunger back to the unit mark for the insulin dose ordered for you. If you see bubbles in the syringe, gently tap on the syringe so the bubbles move to the top. Push the syringe to release the bubbles back into the bottle of insulin. Once again, with the needle in the insulin, pull the plunger back to the unit mark for insulin dose that has been ordered for you. Check that the dose is correct. Set the syringe down without letting the needle touch anything. Since you will be injecting your insulin on a regular basis, you need to know where on your body to inject it. You will also need to learn how to rotate or switch your injection sites. Recommended injection sites include the abdomen, front and side of the thighs, upper and outer arms, and buttocks. Do not inject near joints, the groin area, the navel, the middle of the abdomen, or scar tissue. If you use the same injection site over and over again, you may get hardened areas under your skin that keep the insulin from working properly. Rotating your injection sites will make your injections easier, safer, and more comfortable. Follow these guidelines. Ask your healthcare provider which sites you should use. The injection site is about two inches of skin. Clean this area in a circular motion with an alcohol wipe. Move the site of each injection. Inject at least one and a half inches away from the last spot where you injected. Try to inject in the same general area of your body at the same time each day. Keep a record of which injection sites you have used. 
Every time you give yourself an injection, write down the date, time, and site. Please note, depending on which type of insulin you are taking, absorption may be different for different parts of the body. Talk to your healthcare provider to learn more about the insulin you are using and which sites work best. Using the hand you write with, hold the syringe like a pen or a pencil, with the needle end down. With your other hand, pinch about two to three inches on both sides of the clean skin. Insert the needle with a quick motion into the pinched skin at a 90 degree angle. The needle should go all the way into your skin. Slowly push the plunger of the syringe until all of the insulin is pushed out. Stop pinching your skin and pull the needle out. You may bleed at the spot of the injection. If you notice bleeding, apply pressure with a clean alcohol wipe or a cotton ball. Cover the injection site with a bandage if necessary. Drop the entire syringe and needle into your container for used sharps equipment. Do not put the cap back on the needle. It's important to remember that when storing your insulin that you store unopened bottles in the refrigerator. Unopened insulin that is stored in the refrigerator will be good until the expiration date printed on the box. Write the date on the bottle when you first open it. Store the bottle you are using at room temperature. Avoid temperatures that are too hot or too cold. This can change how the insulin works. Most insulin is good for 28 days once it's opened. Check with your pharmacist or read the drug insert for exact instructions. Always check your medicine type and the expiration date printed on the box before you leave the pharmacy. Do not use insulin if it has lumps, is discolored, or has been frozen. Place used insulin syringes and lancets for blood sugar testing in a hard plastic or metal container with a screw on or tight lid or a commercial sharps container. If you have questions about the subcutaneous injection procedure, please ask your healthcare providers. Thank you again for choosing Cleveland Clinic for your care.